might think there would be one person in this country happier than all the rest about Canada's legalization of recreational marijuana, and that is the country's self-proclaimed Prince of Pot. We're going to get this thing done, and sooner than you think. Legalization has been Mark Emery's cause for decades, even when it landed him in legal trouble, even when it landed him behind bars. 39 prisons, he's told us this morning, including sentenced to five years in a U.S. prison for selling mail-order seeds over the border. He's had his shops raided and shut down, but he says there are problems with the current plan for legalization. I think the market is the most effective tool in displacing the black market. People aren't just going to leave their dealer who they've been buying pot off for 10 years. I think it's a good idea for it to be regulated because um, you never really know what you're getting from street dealers. I'd like to know who owns them. Are these the people moving off the street into legitimate businesses? People are not going to go stand in line for four hours to get low-grade legal cannabis when they can just call their regular drug dealer that they've been calling for 20 years. So that's some of the uh, still ongoing questions. Is increased access enough incentive to break the black market? One of the things I want to talk about uh, over the next couple of minutes with Mark Emery, who's with us in studio for the course of the morning. Thanks for being with us today. Very interested in your perspective. And we began our conversation last hour with sort of what you'll be doing one week from today, how you'll start your day. But I'm curious, what role do you think you've had in the fact that Canada is on the brink of pot legalization? Well, I've certainly thought that my civil disobedience was a good example for others. And Canadians did use civil disobedience. That's how we got every change we've had in this country regarding cannabis. It's probably why we're even at this point in time, because we were breaking the law transparently and openly, telling Canadians this is wrong, cannabis is safe, it's good for you, it has benefits, we should be celebrating its use and the fact that Canada has become a world leader in production. We produce more marijuana per capita than any other place on earth and it's also of the highest quality, uh, particularly in British Columbia and, and Montreal. So, you know, this is something we're really good at, it's worth billions of dollars, we should bring it out into the open, into the light and make a, a recognized legal industry out of it. And we're about to do so one week from now. But I know not exactly as you envisioned it, but I'm just wondering, do you think it's fair to call it the marijuana revolution? Do you think it's going to be a fundamental shift? I mean, we've been getting some interesting tweets from viewers. Just because it becomes legalized doesn't mean everyone and their mom will start smoking it everywhere. People already smoke pot en masse. From a people perspective, not must will change. Just no one's going to go to jail for it. Do you think there's going to be this sudden one big huge cloud of smoke in the country or what do you imagine? I think you're going to see a lot more older people. Uh, older people have a, a, a greater degree of reverence for the law. Young people are willing to break it rather cavalierly. They don't think about whether it's legal or illegal when they are consuming cannabis. But old people do and their access is going to be important because they may not want to smoke cannabis but they're definitely going to want to try oils and foods and substances that will contain CBD to make them feel better or THC to attack tumors or to attack the plaque in the bloodstream for strokes or even you don't get dementia or Alzheimer's if you consume cannabis every day. So there's tremendous things that the elderly in this country of which I'm now one are going to find out about cannabis that's going to be really uh, motivating them to, to get it. Okay. More people are going to be able to get it. Do you mind if I ask? I didn't ask you this off the air. Where do you get your supply? Well, I am actually was forced to become a legal medical user by the courts when they said you can't smoke any illegal drugs. So if you want to smoke marijuana after I was recently convicted, you have to become a medical user. And okay. since I'm still on probation, I have my medical certificate with me at all time. So I have a special exemption, which I don't really think is a, a good thing to have Canadians that are elevated in some legal way above other Canadians. But if you didn't have that, you would what? Grow your own or buy it from a dealer somewhere? Is, would that be... There are so many beautiful, wonderful growers in this country. I would always buy my pot from them. I am growing my own plants legally, 96 right. plants, but I'm not doing a great job at it. 
um, I selected varieties that don't flower or uh, finish in time. So, you know, there's a lot to be said for people with 10, 20, 30 years expertise, of which the licensed producers who are the legal providers in this country don't have. So I think we're going to see a lot of problems with these new giant factory farms that have sprung up all across Canada and have the exclusive license to sell marijuana. Well, we're looking inside one of them and based in they Charlottetown look this morning. I hope it they do look well. like yeah, big mother plants. But nobody's as they smoked say. them yet. Nobody knows what they're going to no, get. No, that is true. But I, I ask about where you would buy it because, for example, one tweet again from a viewer, so people are going to pay the taxed more expensive weed from government over the not taxed weed of the, dizzy, of the dealers. What would it take for someone like you, a regular user, to maybe somebody who buys from a dealer now to actually make the switch to go to a legalized, regulated... That's a very important point because on October 17th, next Wednesday, we only have maybe... 50 shops in Atlantic Canada and probably less than 20 for the rest of Canada, Quebec, Ontario, British Columbia. So we have 5 million consumers in Canada. 95% of them will not be able to conveniently get marijuana for months, for months. So we'll see a much better system in a year. Um, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of challenges. Edibles aren't legal now. Right. Uh, lounges to consume cannabis aren't legal now. Um, we need to get a lot more changes in the law to break down these restrictions and these limitations on our industry and our culture and allow people to express themselves. This is, cannabis is very, very safe. It's not like alcohol and it's not like prescription drugs and so many other things that can kill you and harm you and hurt you. Cannabis won't do that, especially if I were a parent and I saw my teenage children smoking cannabis, I would not be alarmed. That is a very good choice compared to all the other alternatives. Okay, because there are many parents who would say they're very, right. very but concerned about that. alcohol and other drugs, prescription drugs, much more dangerous. And we're hearing from them. I mean, part of the plan from this system is to keep pot out of the hands of minors. As it's structured right now, do you think it will? No, of course not. Uh, no. Because uh, someone who's 19 will share it with someone who's 18, and they'll say the, the, the young people always get cannabis from their closest friends. It's not like some stranger by the schoolyard selling it to strain to kids they don't know. It's their best friends, and so whenever we say, "Oh, I want people punished for selling pot to my my teenagers," you're really saying, "Well, then you're asking for their best friend to be punished and and in some way." Uh, you know, hurt by some kind of prohibition. So the other thing is, again, from, from moving toward a legal framework, is to take out the traffickers, to take out the dealers, to take out the black market and the criminal gangs running right. things now. Will the system time. and the structure as it's set up right now, will it do that? Oh, of course not. No, no. 95% no. of Canadians on legalization day will have to get cannabis from an illegal source, and that will continue for about a year. Anybody who needs cannabis oil, cannabis edibles, uh, they're going to have to continue getting it from an illegal source for uh, at least one year and perhaps longer. So, no, the black market isn't diminishing in any way whatsoever. The black market, I call it the free market, produces better cannabis than these licensed producers because these licensed producers have very little experience they're rushing it to market they're done it's done in factory farms it's not going to be like the craft growers of British Columbia and even people like me who are growing in a greenhouse pesticide free um, with all the modern tools and technology that you can get to grow pot uh, I won't have an incentive to buy this factory farm licensed producer cannabis until I know it's really, really good. And that's going to take some time in the marketplace for people to say, because we can't smell it, we can't see it when we go buy it at a government outlet. Mm -hmm. So how do we know it's any good? It's just going to be a crapshoot. Whereas we know what we're getting right now. Every Canadian who consumes cannabis already has a source, and they're happy with that source. So Bill Blair, who is the minister responsible, the point person on pot for the federal government, he was exactly where you are yesterday. He was saying, we hope in the first year to get 25% of the black market, maybe 50% of the black market in the first year, and they'll consider that a major success. Do you think that's a realistic projection? It's not even a good idea. He should have legalized everybody growing cannabis, everybody selling cannabis, everybody possessing it. It should all be legal on October 17th. There should be no such thing as the black market because everybody growing cannabis should be made legal. And that's the big flaw behind this Cannabis Act is that so many people are still being criminalized for peaceful consenting activity. There's no harm in growing marijuana. And why just four plants in your home? Why can't you have 20 or 30 or 50 plants? Why is it moral to grow four under the new law but not moral to grow 10 or 20 or 30? So many things need to be settled in the courts and I believe the courts are going to rule in our favor and we're going to see a much better jurisdiction shortly.